Hey ladies and jellyfish, welcome back to Ask Your's Videos. Today's a very special day for me because we've got the one and only Phantom Strider on here. Howdy, how you going? He's got a massively successful YouTube channel amassing almost 500,000 subscribers on his main channel and almost 100,000 subscribers on his second channel. He's got thousands of followers on various social media platforms and he's here joining me today for this interview. How you doing Strider? Hey, uh, pleasure to be here. Yeah, thank you so much for, for, for doing this, it's really an honor. No worries. So, my, my first question to you in this interview is, um, how did you start off making making videos? Well, um, I started uh, doing uh, just uh, anime music videos back when I was probably 16, 17. And, you know, I used to do 3D Movie Maker when I was uh, much younger, like just little 3D movies. And I'd always post them to the websites and they'd fail horribly because they were terrible. And <laughs> I just kept on trying to make them better. And eventually I was just like, oh, let's do a review of Dragon Ball GT because I like that anime. And ever, there was nothing really on YouTube about it except uh, kids yelling into their webcams about why it sucks. That was way back in 2000. <laughs> when, oh, maybe, um, 2000, I can't remember, something like that. But uh, yeah, um, quality wasn't as good back then. So. Yeah, and after that I thought, oh, I like Futurama, let's talk about that, and it ended up being quite successful, so I just kept going. Right, because I, I remember back in the day, there weren't much cartoon reviewers in, in the sense that there are now. Um, like you said, it was mostly just kids kind of ranting at their mics. Um, Rebel Taxi and Enzo were around a fair bit before me. Um, like, uh, I actually sort of uh, tried to... Uh, I chat with John occasionally now, like we know each other now, but like back in the day, I didn't. I'm still quite disconnected from certain parts of the cartoon community that are more clicky. Um, but, you know, uh, Enter and Rebel Taxi, originally I was trying to catch up to and just get my quality to be at least at par of them. I, I don't think I've achieved a level of Taxi's quality. He's really good, but uh, well, hopefully people enjoy my work. Right, because if you look in your, your oldest videos, um, the second one is Top 10 Futurama Episodes, but the first one is Full Metal Panic TSR Fandub. Now, can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, there used to be a lot more of those. There was a Chobits Fandub, a whole bunch of Chobits Fandubs. I used to really like Full Metal Panic and all sorts of different animes. You know, I grew up in animes when I was a teen. That's part of why I like to... Uh, guest star on Robin's channel, um, on Anime America's channel, and also because she's a friend, but I basically got out of anime around 20 or so, um, and got more into cartoons, weirdly enough, but, uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that was the main reason for that, and I just took down all the rest, and I just leave that one there more for, kind of, um, you know, emotional, uh, just memory purposes. Right, so, so did you have any, like, inspiration starting off, or did you kind of just do it yourself? Um, I started, uh, obviously, well, not obviously, but I used to watch Angry Video Game Nerd and Nostalgia Critic before I started, and so they were big inspirations to me at the time, and so, um, yeah, I got ideas from them, that sort of thing. I also had a big inspiration from watching, uh, uh, Penn and Teller's Bull Beep when I was, uh, younger. I loved that <laughs> show, and I'm still quite a fan of Penn and Teller, though we have different sort of, um, views in a lot of ways, um, but just that sort of review style um, always really appealed to me and just speaking their honest reality of what they feel is right, you know, not really worrying about what the common consensus is. Right, right. So jumping to, to the present day, um, so what's your video process making like? Because as a video maker myself, it's kind of interesting to hear what other people think. Oh, yeah. Um, it's uh, a lot different. The first 130 odd videos, uh, just looking at one at Phantom Strider alone, I'm at about 148 videos on Phantom Strider now, um, uh, in terms of top lists. But um, up for the first 130, I mostly just did it myself, writing down script ideas and looking through shows and that sort of thing, and sort of just doing whatever sort of suited my fancy. Obviously, trying to go a little bit for what people. Um, wanted nowadays you know i do get a lot of help um around 130 i started getting video editing help from my team and started putting a budget aside to keep my team happy and employed and stuff and just uh um i get now that i'm looking at more games and i'm not as good as games i get the help from uh, script, uh, a script writer i've been working with as an assistant script writer and uh i often get pi guy rules to do my audio editing he's a fantastic editor he's been working yeah. with me for a good year now i think love just him great guy Mm hmm. So, so I know that, uh, like, like you said, you you write most of your stuff, and you have like an assistant writer sometimes. 
Um, mm -hmm. Do you not edit your own videos because you think people are better at it, or do you just want to spend the time maybe writing oh, or no. something like that? Uh, I've got an amazing team, but I finalize and get them to send me all the Premiere. I don't know if you work with Premiere or what, but I get them to send me all the files um, and make sure I edit over them and finalize them and put them together. But I like to get a uh, creative energy from a lot of different people as I... I work have had Jim. He's also a friend who helps me with some edits. Uh, uh, he'll sometimes uh, contribute a segment, and sometimes Anime America she'll contribute a couple of segments. Um, mm -hmm. Some of my other team might contribute a few. Toon Grin's a big one, and everyone sort of gives a different take. And I've looked very carefully over the last year for people who are passionate enough that they can kind of get that energy across. Because I'm quite obsessive compulsive, and it took me a very long time to say. I trust other people enough that they can do a good enough job. And even now I have to go over everything and give feedback and that sort of thing, but they've gotten pretty good at it now. So, but obviously it's all written by me and that sort of thing. But it's just piecing together the right footage, getting that right feel. Also taking into mind things like uh, my audience, a lot of us are on the autism spectrum. So, and a lot of us often are photosensitive. Um, we particularly can get more photosensitive as we get older. Mm -hmm. And I uh, always have to sort of look at the decibels not being too high, you know. If I can't stand it, I'm certainly not going to uh, uh, send it out to the public. <laughs> right, right, gotcha. So so how do you come up with your with your video ideas? Because I noticed uh, you have a lot of videos, obviously, on your channel, so I don't know, how do you come up with that stuff? Um, well, it's going to sound very airy-fairy, but to some degree I feel like you come up with the best ideas when you're uh, in sort of that creative mode, that more relaxed state, you know. Uh, yeah. I find meditation helps a whole lot. Um, I run in the mountains sometimes, and I tend to find sort of the subconscious comes up with good ideas, or conscious whatever, um, while you're sort of going through that sort of um, running in the mountains or, or resting or meditating or something like that. It's, I keep a um, uh, my phone or my tablet by me, and every time I think of an idea, I was like, "Ooh, uh, worst and best Thomas episodes." Ooh, I'll just <laughs> I'll just pour through some. I've got my <laughs> to do list: uh, worst and best Star Wars games, worst and best uh, Fallout games, worst and best video game remakes, PC version, modern Sonic games, worst and best Disneyland rides. I love to do uh, rides or something like that, but it's really going to depend how games go because uh, so far games are going pretty good. I'm just seeing if my audience and the general audience is interested in games in general. So, oh, I wouldn't mind doing biggest Roblox games as well. That'd be kind of neat. But yeah, so right. I don't know, they sort of just sprout to me. And sometimes I'll get ideas from viewers, you know, they'll contribute great ideas. Yeah. Yeah, same, same with me. I, I have like, um, I tend to think of stuff either when I'm in the shower or when I'm about to go to sleep, which kind of sucks because then I forget mm. about it in the morning. So I put like mm. a little notepad on the top of my, like the bed uh, frame thing. And I have a pencil taped to it, so then I just write it down while I'm sleeping, which is kind of fun. Oh, that so totally think. happens to me too, yeah. I'll be yeah. just meditating before bed or something, or in bed, and I'll be like, oh, I don't want to get up to write this idea, but I better, otherwise I'll forget it. And, mm -hmm. and it may not sound quite as brilliant in the morning, but <laughs> it's good. <laughs> yeah, good exactly. Yeah. I yeah, reckon it's... into your Google Docs, actually, um, and you can just uh, sort of open up your notepad, and it online saves everything. And I've oh, yeah. had my teammates, uh, I'll send everything to them over Google Docs because they can share the document with me online. It's really Yeah, yeah. I use Google Docs for everything. I, it's just I don't want to oh. use my phone when I'm like really tired. I don't That's know. smart. I um, use paper and stuff. Oh, yeah, blue light filters are helpful for that as well. Uh, yeah, I set my phone to silent though or off at night uh, just because, I don't know, I'm already a uh, very light sleeper and, you know, I'm a mm. night bird. I'm up till like 3 a.m. some nights because that's <laughs> yeah. when I work best. But, <laughs> like you. Um, yeah. Now, often I think us in this creative field tend to be night birds. I've certainly seen it with uh, Robin, George, Alpha J, Jim. Oh, Jim's, Jim's not too bad, but um, all of them, um, I found the night birds, most of my YouTube friends. <laughs> yeah. So, so I've noticed in your newer videos, um, you, you kind of show your face a lot more, like you use a green screen or you're by your desk. Um, yeah. Do you like showing your face or, or do you prefer to use an avatar if you can or, or something? Honestly, it's a constant tug of war uh, for me because it takes a lot more um, emotional energy. For example, uh, I was just on uh, film last night and I was basically in front of camera doing worst and best Lego games for three to four hours in front of the green screen. And uh, you heard it here I'm first. Thinking, um, <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. Uh, Fencer's next video. 
<laughs> yeah, well, um, uh, and so when I, I'm, I'm really excited about an idea or something, you know, I was like, I'm so excited about this. I want to express to viewers, I want them to see my excitement when I talk about Lego games and that sort of thing. And, you know, SpongeBob Games was another example. Um, I, I tend to enjoy more and my team enjoys more doing ones where they're editing me talking and just putting stuff over the top because it's more vibrant, more alive. But I also am aware that when I started, when I've been on YouTube, there have been times where I just want people um, vi uh, videos to get to the goddamn point and talk about the content. I don't want to see some guy mugging the camera. So I'm, I'm very shy about it. Sort of like every two videos, maybe I'll do it. And if I do, it'll also still be a lot of footage content, not just, Hey, what's up guys? Douchebag YouTube here. Don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> um, you know, and I'm, I'm yeah. very conscientious of that because I, really really vehemently dislike that kind of smug self-satisfied sort of persona we sometimes get on youtube so when i do come on camera i try to be very polite and modest and caring and uh, you know and I, I think it's important to have yourself on camera sometimes and looking at the audience and showing it's a real person but that being said the way i'm talking you now with my blue yeti does give much better audio quality so sometimes I'll just be like, oh, if I think it's going to be a real general video, I'll just, uh, yeah, he's my Blue Yeti. Yeah, like, I'm pretty sure Nostalgia Credit does the same thing, where, like, when he's showing clips, he just comes closer to the mic, I guess, and he, like, mm -hmm. records it better. That was how he told me he used to do it. Um, mm -hmm. He would just get in front of the mic <laughs> a bit right. closer. Wouldn't even bother with a Blue Yeti, but um, his setup <laughs> is much, much better now. Do you think you'd ever get character stills if you, like, commissioned someone to make them, or...? Are you fine with like the character skills? Like I don't know, like you, someone draws you like a happy face, a sad face, a mad face, whatever, and then you can put them on the screen, like Alpha J um, does, or no? Yeah, um, all the casting critics seem to do it, um, and they do a really good job with it. Honestly, I had a whole, I had a competition actually where I uh, offered um, people to post in their ideas and. I eventually did choose a competition winner and paid them for their work and stuff, but they were so hard to work with and so egocentric. And I've worked with a lot of people over the last year or so. Mm -hmm. Some, the primary most important thing I find in working with people, that's one of the greatest joys of a job, human management. And right. uh, when I know when someone's a good person, when they're what they're in it for and that sort of thing, when they're modest, decent people. And that's the main thing I look for when I'm looking for team members. And this guy just, he, he was not a nice, trusting, caring person. He would not show me anything until I sent the money through. And it's like, and I'm not gonna, certainly not gonna give any names because that's, you know, I can understand this industry being very, very cautious, but it was such a bad experience for me though, that I just completely went off avatar, doing avatars and I was just like, whatevs you know i'll just show me <laughs> i'll just show me juggling because people i mean we don't get that much in the cartoon industry actually that much live action stuff that i've seen certainly not in modern ones anyway yeah that's actually a really good point uh like not a lot of cartoon reviewers show their face so that's pretty good um i guess dichotomy i guess i don't know i suspect it's because a lot of us in the cartoon industry um uh, people on the spectrum tend to be very attracted to cartoons I've found over the years. We just have more of an emotional connection with it because it's much easier to put, well, for many reasons, but one of those is it's much easier to perceive emotions from cartoon characters and that sort of thing. I've always had that connection and I perceive it might be that part of why that is the cartoon creators or cartoon uh, YouTube creators tend to also be slightly on the spectrum themselves and probably are a little bit camera shy. I could be completely off the mark on that, but that's just what I've perceived over the last four or five years. Right. So, so as a YouTuber, what's your what's your favorite part of making videos? Um, like, do you like reading comments, or do you like the the process of making them or sharing them? Or uh, I used I used to not I used to get very scared and nervous reading comments back in the day and that sort of thing um, because. You know, particularly uh, back when I was first starting, it wasn't always very nice and that sort of thing. And, you know, obviously that's going to happen. That means you're not in a bubble, which is, I actually prefer when I'm getting more bad comments nowadays because it means my video isn't just in my one circle. YouTube's actually showing to it, it to people outside my circle and they're actually mm -hmm. clicking. So, um, you know, um, if I, anyway, um, I would say finishing the video and having your idea there on paper 
By the end of a video though, it normally takes me a week to two weeks, a lot of time from my team, a fair bit of money and that sort of thing. And I'm just exhausted afterwards. So I don't even want to do the final check. The final check where I, I absolutely hate that part because basically I'm going through looking for what I call flickers, that millisecond where when I do a cross dissolve, you can see a frame beforehand and it's just really unpleasant on the yeah, eyes. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. And, Sometimes and editors do that when you like switch frame rates or something, it's really annoying. Yeah, it's, it's really annoying when I see them in YouTube uh, videos, and I don't know if many people notice it, but it just pees me off for I'll, I'll leave on watermark, you know, something like that, you know how it is, but like, mm. um, and that, that procedure is just freaking torture. I call it crunch time the last 48 hours. <laughs> I don't know if you need this much detail on the process, but like the last 48 hours is just hell. But after it's done and you've recovered a bit, I've uh, just you know, had a night's sleep, meditated a bit, or taken a run in the forest, and I'll look back at my work and say, oh, that was great. Look how the team came together. Look at what we can produce when we work together and look how many people like it. You know, it's just, it's lovely to feel relevant sometimes or to just sit down sometimes and look over my channel and my videos and say, oh, people are still enjoying that one. Oh, that one's having a resurgence. <laughs> I just yeah, I mean, that's love. the whole point. You know, that's right. Yeah. So yeah, as a um, top 10, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Oh no, I was just going to say, as a creator, it's wonderful to have, I like top tens because in some degree they tend to, they can be looked back on that. I don't tend to be do current stuff. And, and uh, I like that sometimes people can look back on my content from a long time ago and still enjoy it. Mm -hmm. So as a top 10 channel, where do you think some top 10 channels fall short, like Watch Mojo or anything else? I don't know. They just don't give a crap so often. Um, <laughs> like uh, they just pump out the content, they'll throw a million ads in and they won't get to the goddamn point. And when people click on a top 10 list, I'm, I'm not meant to be sophisticated content. I try to make it sophisticated and have heart, but I've constantly got to discipline my get self to get to the goddamn point and remember that I'm a top 10 list and I can see the retention drop. Um, mm -hmm. Very, And it's very ruthless when you see the retention. You're on YouTube, you can probably see it too in analytics. Yeah. Um, you lose about 15% in the th first 10, 15, 20 seconds. And mm -hmm. it just goes there. So you've got to get to the points. Um, and I, I do find that a lot of top 10 channels, oh, well, they're just obnoxious or they're loud or they're like, hey guys, what's up? Douche, douche, douche here. Yeah, there was this video. There was this video by Jax Films a couple years ago. It's called Every Top Ten Channel Ever, and it's just making fun of like how they all have like an annoying narrator. It's all like watermarks and ads, and I don't know. It's kind of oh, and some of their voices just drive me mad. It's like <laughs> there's this. I don't know. I'm. This is part of why I'm disconnected from much of the YouTube community because. Uh, in some ways, I hate the, in certain parts of the community because it just sends my gut into a rage. This sort of self-entitled hey i'm here this is what you guys told me to do it's like assuming the audience is there just like when kids get this authority and uh, get told they're wonderful before they even have to grow up and it just creates a very odd sort of macaulay culkin child uh, <laughs> culture that i'll be very interested to see the um effects of in 10 years time as they grow up and if that fame disappears on them, which for many it does, you know, um, I never assume uh, fame will stay. I'm just glad for every year I can keep doing this. Yeah, but I mean, those year, channels right also now. are the same as their audience. Like the audience grows out of that content, like mm -hmm. after they grow up. So that's the problem oh, yeah. with that kind and of video. Um, you know, you don't tend to get people when I have people no notice me or something and they'll say, hey, I used to watch your videos and that's perfectly normal because there's a lot of churn in YouTube. People tend to stay on for something for a bit, but there's so much content. They'll go, they'll go subscribe to something else in a couple of months time and completely forget the channel. And that's just part of what happens. So, but fortunately, YouTube is very good at giving us an audience. Um, Hank talked about it one time. He's very good at that. Mm -hmm. So speaking of top 10 videos, you're most well known for your top, t top 10 and top six lists. Um, but do you think you'll ever do any new series on your channel or just stick with the top 10? Uh, well, I mean, I'm doing a lot of five worst and best nowadays. Um, I just completely cut out the top nowadays because I'm like, people know what it freaking is. Of course, it's a, <laughs> you know, you five worst and best. I'm trying to cut out the, the fat of the process a bit and what people have to see. Um, 
Well, I'm, I, I love doing darkest lists. For a while there, I was just being a, I love the fact that I was being more of a storyteller than a top 10 teller and just talking about dark episodes. But to some degree, I would do more dark lists because they're probably some of my favorite because I have a real fascination with the dark. Um, and I love bringing that darkness to light in a palatable, caring, um, open way. Like Mr. Rogers says, anything that is mentionable is manageable. The problem was I just kind of ran out of content because there's only so many dark shows or shows that dealt with serious issues in kind of animation. And so I just, I could not find many lists. You know, at one point I was like, the funniest list I could do would be like the darkest Elmo's World episodes, but I was like, there's only so much I could pull out of this. Yeah, like I love so, your, yeah. your darkest Nick episodes with Limit on George. That was awesome. Oh yeah, and George is an absolute pleasure to work with. Uh, certainly one of my favorites because he brings so much to the table. He often will um, g contribute ideas to the scripts, tell me about some of his research. In the past, he's dug something up before and when i'm kind of doing an idea that i feel he's done i feel like i can't not include them without people going hey george already did this way better and i was like well yeah well i'll have him tell that to me to my face <laughs> <laughs> right so you've got this new trend of like uh game lists on your channel you've got top f five yeah. best and worst cartoon network games nickelodeon games simpsons games and uh illumination i think there's a couple or sorry um Disney games Spongebob and Spongebob games. games. Yeah. So is this supposed to be like a series or are you going to like flush us out or is it just another genre in your top 10 lists or top five? Well, it's another genre. I'm, as I mentioned previously, I'm basically just testing the water. I've been sitting in animation, animated movies and cartoon series for probably about five years now. And I'm on a roll now because like, I'm so excited to finally be doing something different to be reviewing something different. And it's this whole world of content in gaming. And I'm just at the moment seeing, I have a quota of if it hits, doesn't hit a hundred thousand views in the first week, I haven't engaged enough of my audience and I've done something wrong. So um, oftentimes I'll just test the water. So SpongeBob, I started with SpongeBob games, which has been a fantastic success and is one of my favorite videos um, uh, to have done. And I'm really glad I was included in that. And Disney games we did all right. You know, there was an audience for that. I think it's 250, 300,000, something like that. Um, so some people seem to really enjoy that. Overall though, I find people are tuning in for the games, even if it's a bit later over time. So I'm definitely looking forward to expanding that. I started with Cartoon Network and Nickelodeon because they're kind of related to animation. And it's something that I haven't seen many, certainly not many larger channels do. Um, uh, so yeah, I'm just going to try some of those out and I'll, I'll start expanding hopefully into other things after Lego games, like uh, as I was mentioning before, you know, I don't know if, uh, I was thinking Fallout games, but I think that's a bit too obscure for the time being. Maybe Star Wars games, modern Mario games is another one coming up. That'll be fun. So, and just see how people like it. And if they do, I'll keep doing it with some animation in between, of course. Right. So between your videos, which one is your favorite game between the Nickelodeon and Cartoon Network games? Um, I'm going to say the Nickelodeon games pile was very disappointing. I feel of, I really had to stretch it to call um, some of those good. Um, like, uh, I, I found a lot of them were just very average. Cartoon Network games, I found were much more dedicated. That Pretty much every one of them had voice actors. Um, the original voice actor team, they seemed to actually be glad to be there. There was a bit more budget in them. There was a bit more personality. Um, you know, even uh, talking about Pirates of Ancheridian, I feel I was too harsh on that. Like, uh, there's been some really good Cartoon Network games, but I would say my favorite, obviously, is Battle for Bikini Bottom. I'm definitely going to get the remake for that. Some of the SpongeBob games, because SpongeBob is such a just memorable personality, he can he can fit into a game so well that I've certainly replayed some of the SpongeBob games and uh, um, some of the Lego games too. I'm actually just been playing Lego Star Wars a bit uh, in my free time. Yeah, I mean, with you said about Nickelodeon's games being kind of cheap, that's kind of Nickelodeon's uh, reputation, I guess. Motto. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, so, you know, sitcoms are cheaper, but, you know, I guess we're not the target audience anymore. Us nitpicky, critiquing, um, slightly older audience, you know, it's we're right. not the ones giving them the money. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I watched a couple sitcoms back in the day, so I can't really say anything on that. I, I definitely watch more cartoons, but, like, I saw, you know, Drake and Josh and Sam and Cat and all that, so... 
I wonder if that's partially um, just us sort of being uh, cartoon enthusiasts, maybe slightly on the spectrum or something like that, or just having more of a fascination with um, uh, animation than uh, sitcoms. Because I was the same way, and I think Alpha and George and a lot of the other reviewers uh, were as well. Like we tended to tune in for cartoons more. Yeah, I mean, I'm not even on the spectrum, and I love cartoons, so I guess everyone likes it. An enthusiast, though. Oh, certainly not everyone likes cartoons, but no, it's just interesting, because, yeah, I didn't much uh, watch that many sitcoms either. It just wasn't as fascinating to me as cartoons, but anyway. Right, so this is a bit of a... We're, we're moving on a little bit. What's what's your favorite, and if you can, your least favorite video you've made on your channel? Um... Although I really agreed with, I still agree with all my choices in Worst South Park, I just didn't feel the video was put together and I didn't make my points well enough. Also, Worst Cartoon Remakes, I feel I didn't study that well enough and that tends to be the one that most of the uh, critiquing channels that critique cartoon critiquers, critiquers, <laughs> what <a> I, <laughs> um, tend to uh, p pick at me on and I've openly said on some of the channels that uh, you're right I didn't research that well enough I was in a hurry at the time I shouldn't have thrown everything Scooby-Doo under the bus because obviously there's stuff like Mystery Incorporated and while I have no very little patience for Scooby-Doo um I would say that one was probably a bit of a failure even though it did well but it didn't have much lasting appeal it was just sort of in the algorithm for a while even though it got to I think one or two million but um, it was just sort of in the algorithm. I think it was being more forced in people's face. And I, I like it better when people are actually clicking because they're interested. Right. So, and do you have a favorite? I don't think you said your favorite. Um, I actually have a list of um, my favorites uh, on the channel. I think uh, SpongeBob Games is probably my number one favorite, but I also like doing cartoons around the world back in the day. It's my favorite, yeah. Um, oh, Darkest, pretty, so many of the Darkest I really enjoyed. Um, Darkest Cartoon Network episodes was one of my favorites to do. It was just very intense. I love the soundtrack of Death Egg. Darkest Girls Cartoon episodes was when I was trying to delve more into um, seeing if there was some of the female demographic uh, enjoyed more. And I'm very proud of that one uh, because I feel we discussed a lot of issues in a very gentle, caring way. I really like that one as well. Very good feel. I used to like Best Modern Cartoons as one of my favorite, but I disagree with some of my choices on there now. I can't believe I put Steven Universe as number one uh, back in the day, but um, I did. So <laughs> there we are. But I, I still, still think it's a wonderful mood in the video and I like it. Creepiest Mickey Cartoons I loved doing, though I feel some of my Dark Strider bits are unnecessary <laughs> I'm a bit cringe I, I just I, I just can't get the feel right for Dark Strider sometimes it's just it's hard to get that feel right for what I'm trying to do but anyway what's from best Spongebob specials oh Lego movies as well I love talking de Lego best Disney movies has kind of always been the algorithm that one will probably be, ar be around till YouTube falls in the ocean um yeah no there's a few like that I just really enjoyed right so you're talking about Steven Universe you said in your mm. videos that Steven Universe is your favorite modern cartoon and you seem to Not hate any. modern, yeah. And you seem to hate Modern Family Guy and uh, Adult Party Cartoon, as far as I know. Um, uh, do you ever? Yeah. Yeah. Do you ever find yourself liking the bad ones, ironically, or hating the good ones sometimes? It really depends. I think there's a lot of uh, cartoons I do like, uh, iron dislike ironically. And honestly, I've been tuning into some of the Modern Family Guy lately, and I've really enjoyed some of it. The funny thing about Modern Family Guy, and part of why it doubles the ratings of South Park constantly, is because even when it's cringe, you never know what to expect. <laughs> and as I've gotten into my early 30s, I've actually started to really appreciate that. And while there are still some parts I'm like, oh, that's disgusting, um, it's almost worth it to get just those surprises. Because in South Park, for example, which I've also gone off, um, you very much know what's going to happen very often. C Cartman's going to be, for some reason, despite him being a psychopath, has become the mouthpiece for Trey and Matt quite often. Everyone's going to overreact to something. They're going to make fun of something and do it very obscure to the point where I have to look up a Wikipedia article. Family Guy will make a point sometimes and they'll be direct. They'll talk directly to the camera. They might go to a crazy cutaway. And it's so unexpected now that I actually really appreciate that about it. But that being said, there are episodes where I'm like, I think there are, uh, some people think I overreacted with that cutting wrist um, 
joke. But the thing is, is now is that anyone who sees that now has been effectively told by a cartoon um, how to kill themselves. And you don't tend to forget that scene once you see it. And I feel the fact that a cartoon has told a whole generation of teenagers how to die um, is really, really disgusting. So there are parts of Family Guy I do not forgive, um, but there are parts that are still very clever. And I often walk a knife's edge with that, saying, do I even want to bring attention to it by talking worse and best modern Family Guy? Family Guy gets lots of clicks. I mean, part of the why the recent copyright system is there is because so much Family Guy footage gets uploaded. But um, yeah, so... Uh, always very on the edge about Family Guy, not always sure which way to go with it. Right, like, I've never seen Family Guy, but I've, I watched The Simpsons a few mm. weeks ago. I've never seen The Simpsons before that. And mm. like you said you like Modern Family Guy. I like, actually, season 30 of Simpsons more than, like, season 3 or 4 from yeah, the episodes I, I've I seen. Definitely get that. It, it's funny to hear that from a younger generation who didn't grow up with them. And I do tend to honestly find myself, um, you know, uh, preferencing season seven of The Simpsons and looking back at some of the episodes and saying, oh, it's so much simpler back then. Uh, but the writers have changed so much. And some these writers have grown up with these early seasons and are fans of The Simpsons. And we've essentially got fans of The Simpsons writing now. And so it, it's a very different dichotomy and they're very smart people. Um, uh, but yeah, it, it's just a very different dichotomy. Right. So people usually get on my back for not reviewing a lot of like a lot of variety of shows. I mostly just review SpongeBob, because I'm Ben 10 and a couple other shows. Mm. Um, so for you, do you feel like you may have overdone a couple shows, or have you maybe underdone a couple shows, or you want to give some shows some more love? Honestly, uh, there are certainly some. Sh it's funny because like I tend to be told, "Oh, you do nothing but Teen Titans Go." But I've done like two, three Teen Titans Go videos in the last five years, and I've done like seven SpongeBob videos, and no one goes, "Oh, what you talk about is SpongeBob." Um, that being said, I don't get told that much anymore. Very rarely, you know. I think the last person who told me that was Lily, and hasn't she hasn't tuned in for my content for years. So, um, yeah, but like, uh, no. So it's interesting what you get told. Uh, honestly. I am happy to always talk about SpongeBob and more because it's such a pleasant subject. And if someone can see a video and just click it and get some relative joy and interest out of it, you know, I don't think you can cover something too much, you know. Mm -hmm. Poor Pi Guy, though, he really got SpongeBobbed out because he reviewed the whole dang first <laughs> season. So dedicated. Yeah. Yeah, I love Pi Guy. So let's talk That's about possibly your. Too much for like full 10 seasons of reviews, but uh, I'm not right. quite there yet. Yeah, one of them was like three hours long, the season nine review. That one was crazy. I know, isn't that amazing? <laughs> Let's talk about your second channel. So you have this fun series on Live Strider, um, where you stream and answer questions while walking, maybe in the woods or like in a mall. I think it's kind of, I think it's kind of fun. Uh, what do you, why do you do it? And can you like explain the concept to someone who may not know what I'm talking about? Oh yeah, sure. So I just uh, turn on my uh, my. Um... Uh, phone and just start talking to people while I walk in the mall or walk in the forest and <laughs> I'll read out the questions if as many as I can there's I never never enough that I can answer um and answer them and just uh, kind of enjoy the scenery with people really that's cool you're like one of the um, only cartoon reviewers who like exercises a lot I don't know anyone else who does that well, I, I go mad. I otherwise, um, as well as my um, being on the spectrum slightly, I also have obsessive compulsive and anxiety disorders and light sleeping. Um, I got a real um, chemical load <laughs> in the genetic pool. But that being said, I'm very blessed as well. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and so it just means that I've spent a lot of dedicated a lot of my life to um, sustaining uh, certain things to keep my mental health good. You know, the, the meditation, the exercising, the running, that sort of thing. Well, you know, and it just makes me just able to live more comfortably. <laughs> um, I think, though, a lot of the cartoon reviewers are a bit younger than me. And mm -hmm. uh, um, I think it's a different generation as well. I am I did basic Navy training. You know, I went through and was one of the fittest. I was the second fittest one there. You know, it was too little. It was le less exercise than I really have in basic training, but I'm not trying to show off there. I'm just saying that I'm a little bit different in that way in a slightly different generation. I'm a bit more Gen X than Gen Y or Z. And it's just different expectations. Right. So you've collabed with a couple YouTubers in the past. So without insulting anyone, 
who was the most fun to work with? Was it Doug Walker, Anime America, or Blame It on George? Um, Robin's always a pleasure to work with. I just really enjoy having her on camera in the video. Um, uh, let's see, I'm just trying to think over some of them. George is always fun because he does a bit of research, will exchange ideas, he'll look, he really, I, I completely understand when you're a YouTuber and when you're doing relatively well, um, you're just constantly pouring time into your own channel and your own ideas, so it's, Robin's had me on for a few videos and I've struggled to sort of make the time to look over the script and do more than voice them, yet alone edit them nowadays. Um, so I get that, but George has always made the time to uh, uh, research and look at the script of what I've written for him, change it to suit him and that sort of thing, add any points to something I'm missing. Um, you know, he'll correct me if I've... Uh, so he's a real pleasure to work with. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, and as I said, Robin's always lovely. Doug was fine to work with. Um, he just sent me the takes. You know, he's a very busy fella, so um, he changed his lines here and there, you know, but uh, mostly I just tried to get it to his tone and look over his review. Mm -hmm. uh, is, it, yeah, is, yeah. There, is there another big YouTuber you, you're looking to collab with? Um, I don't know if he's big, but I'd, I'm a big fan of Dan from Extra Credits back when I thought it was decent. I don't watch the channel now. I, the new freaking voice on there is so obnoxious YouTuber, I just <laughs> can't listen. But Dan is actually another person that inspired me. Um, he has a very gentle tone and he's not trying to prove anything and he's modest and he's not full of himself and it very much comes through his voice. So I was watching him back in 2010, you know, and like, um, but then, you know, changed, it became more of a viral channel and less about, I don't know, I'm not going to poo-poo them, but uh, yeah, and he just does his own thing now on his own Let's Play channel, and they do fine, but I'd love to have him on because to, he's also a Pixar and an animator, and I, I'd love to have him on the channel and get his opinion sometime on a show. Oh, really? Which, which movies has yeah. he done? I think he was a big part of Brave. He was showing footage of that and uh, screenshots of it years before it came out. So I'm going to say he was a big part of that. And it just shows how long they have some of these in the works. Right. Are you looking to collab with anybody maybe in the cartoon community? Um, let's see. Um, I really want to get Pie Guy on at some point because, oh, he's been such a trooper and I really like his delivery and voice. Um, I would definitely like to have Alpha on for something else, but I always, I can never find the right topic. It's always a funny choice. And whether you want to put the <laughs> energy in to put someone, give them the script, get them to have to go through the effort and energy and then get the lines and make it feel right. And Because I try to make sure whenever there is a collaboration that it feels honest and natural. Whenever George says something or something, I kind of react to it. Oh, Real Jims was also real nice to work with. He's my favorite Simpsons reviewer. Um, and, but even with Jims, for example, you know, in the Simpsons games, I tried to make sure I was responding right. He was saying lines, I was, it was balanced. So it's a bit more of a mental game when you do a collaboration to do it well, not just to have you both read lines. Mm -hmm. So um, let's move on a little bit. How do you feel about where you are on YouTube today? Um, I think I kind of have my area. Um, when you're on YouTube for a while, you tend to sort of get the algorithm kind of jams you into a particular zone because if you want to uh, stick to, like if you want to get clicks up and get to that, um, you know, higher uh, mark, you need to sort of release content that your subscribers are going to click on. And if my subscribers have been tuning in for Family Guy and South Park and Simpsons since five years ago, they might not necessarily have an interest in Disney rides or Disneyland or um, Disney games. Fortunately, they did, but um, and game content and that sort of thing. Or if I want to talk about the worst foods, it was a while I wanted to try sprouting into something really obscure or really vague and talking about foods and how it's made and stuff. But I abandoned that idea because like, unless you get those first clicks, it's very hard to get. It's part of why, you know, some of the new channels <laughs> find it so hard to get traction because the algorithm won't see them unless people are click their subscribers are clicking on those first videos. Hey, I would watch a live strata video where you talk about how you make food. That would be amazing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. I, well, I would enjoy it. <laughs> now, yeah. I, should, I, I definitely want to produce more, more live strata stuff soon. It's just, um, I've been really knuckling down and trying to get a lot of content out during the coronavirus, particularly this game stuff while I've still got the enthusiasm for it. I figure while I'm on a roll, I might as well work hard. Right. 
While I have you here, can I get a scoop on, like, your next few videos, if you have any, if you're working on anything? Oh, yeah, sure. Um, uh, it's pretty much as I told you. Um, next up, we've got Worst and Best, uh, um, Lego games. That one's been super fun to do. We talk about Lego Batman 2. We talk about Lego Stunt Rally. We talk about Lego Island 1 and 2. We talk about Lego Star Wars, obviously, and Lego Star Wars Force. We get lots, lots of fun. After that will be Worst and Best Modern Mario games. My new assistant scriptwriter, Riven Rev, has been a big help with those. Um, we'll talk about Mario Odyssey, Super Mario Galaxy. I played those ones through, loved those games. Um, eventually we'll get to Modern Sonic probably, but I've been putting that off for two years. I can probably put it off for another few months. <laughs> um, I don't know why, but that one. Uh, I've been thinking of um, doing like something like, uh, I'd love to do worst and best um, mobile spongebob games even though it's quite obscure just because i i don't know i love to talk spongebob and i'd love to talk about some mobile games because are there, a, lot of, to are, into are there like a couple spongebob mobile games oh tons yeah um oh. part of the reason i made it an option was uh that while i'm researching i'll often find another genre of games and there were so many spongebob games that as i mentioned at the start i could have made a top 30 list and a lot of those are mobile games cartoon network and nickelodeon are the same, same way but um you know, I wouldn't dedicate an entire list, but you know, there's tons of mobile games because they're much cheaper to produce. They um, tend to get a larger market, you know, than the consoles nowadays because anyone can download it from the app store. So yeah, it's, it's certainly a changing world. Right. Um, well, other than YouTube, you have a pretty sizable audience on Twitter, Discord, Facebook, Instagram, and a couple others, and of course YouTube. Well, you're generous to say that. <laughs> I think it's very sizable on there, but, uh, you know, a few hundred people tend to enjoy my tweets. I mean, come on, your Twitter has like a couple thousand, at least. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, which one do you like best and why? Like, which social media do you... Uh, you know, honestly, I find the least stress comes from Instagram because I basically can post anything there and people will generally like it. It's just the people who've tuned in there basically just want to see me. I can show my face and talk about what's going on and I know I'll get a hundred, a few hundred likes there, lots of comments. Facebook's my least favorite because I can post something what I actually think is really neat there and it'll maybe get I'll see 200 views and 10 engagements. Like, I don't know, people on Facebook are ruthless for some reason. Mm -hmm. um, Twitter is the one I definitely post to most often because I'm very uh, connected, interconnected with the cartoon community there. And I don't know, it's like a social circle. We're all kind of in on it. And I feel I get the most message out to people on Twitter because it's kind of where everyone connects. And so when I really want to say something, I generally will use Twitter. Yeah, same for me. I, I, Twitter is the best. I, I, I'm mad that I didn't get Twitter sooner than I did. I got it a couple years ago and it's so good for collaborating and finding other YouTubers and even like knowing about the news, like news on YouTube, stuff like that. Oh, yeah. And like, um, so yeah, to, to summarize, Facebook is annoying and awful and I don't post there often. It's mostly there for my local friends to see or my <laughs> that sort of thing. Um, I, I don't know. I post there less and less, though I do try to post there. And they're always trying to make you push more money into um, advertising more people. You might reach an extra hundred people. Woo! And like <laughs> when they should be paying us to be uh, giving them content. I don't know. It's horrible. We are there. Um, Instagram right. is the most pleasant though, um, though, I don't know, yeah, I, I really enjoy Instagram, though I do get a very slow increase in following on there that I can't really seem to multiply at any rate, and Twitter is just the most common. Do you like your Discord server? Oh yeah, I've gotten into it uh, particularly a bit more now because the community has become much more engaged since I've opened it up to the public. Mm -hmm. I really should have done that earlier because um, it's just, it's got patrons happier it's got the public happier it's very active and it's just become a magic community in terms of so friendly to people i've been to a couple of new discord servers lately incognito and just looked around a bit and found that some of them are so cold and i just i felt very proud when i went back to um, my <laughs> discord and saw people are welcoming when new people come in when someone's having a problem inventing my team will be not my team sorry but the community will be there to talk to them and to listen to them, absolutely wonderful. So out of all the things I've, uh, you know, uh, inverted commas achieved on here, I would say having this community come together um, 
somewhat under um, you know pretense of videos and stuff is just wonderful because it's just magical, wonderful people. Right. So you're great at critiquing cartoons and animation in general. So I was curious, um, as a cartoon, I guess, advocate yourself, uh, if you were interested in making your own cartoon or maybe animate a movie one day. I, I get asked that a, a fair bit, actually. And I know Enter gave it a shot and that sort of thing. And mm -hmm. see Alpha doodling stuff. He's an amazing animator. You know, there's so much more talent than me in the cartoon uh, critic community in terms of animation. But I'm... Part of, I think, why I am relatively successful, relatively successful, is that I do what I know I'm good at. I don't tend to sprout out. I know what people are likely going to want to watch in the afternoon when they're tired and just feel like tuning in for something pleasant. I'm a reasonably good marketer. I studied psychology and I have obsession with psychology. I am more about just making a pleasant experience and that's my passion, but I have no talent drawing and I don't feel any of my ideas uh, should be anything beyond crummy YouTube videos, you know, it's just I don't think they're that good and there is so much more talented people out there, particularly when I see the cartoon, uh, you know, cartoons on Disney XD, for example, and I say, holy dually, you know, $250,000 a minute for some of this animation mm -hmm. and people put in so much i just can't match that and i wouldn't even bother trying you know i'll do what i'm relatively good at you know who knows maybe so you that's, could that's, make that's... a maybe you could make a cartoon and put it on an oasis when it comes out <laughs> no no i wouldn't that's in a couple a couple ball. years oh god gee this <laughs> right so the interview is unfortunately coming to a close um so thank you for joining me i know the time zones are, are hard to meet up like this um, well, that's okay. I really enjoyed it. Thank you for all the interesting questions. It's let me reflect too, so I appreciate mm -hmm. what you've helped me with too. Yeah, so, so my last question is, do you have any advice to new- because I know you're like a huge inspiration to myself and others, I assume, so do you have any advice for new YouTubers, especially cartoon reviewers, maybe starting off today? Well, um, honestly, I would say go in because you're passionate about it and not necessarily because you're looking for money. I've seen a lot of people crash and burn quite badly. Actually, quite a few in the cartoon industry, particularly, who've just gone in for the money and they faked it, as they would say. Um, and they've just... YouTube has burned them out. They might have made a bit of money while they were there. So even if you can be successful with all the dirty tricks, I don't know if you're going to like yourself at the end if you if you are kind of successful using dirty tricks and hot takes and that sort of thing. So go into the cartoon critic community if you're passionate about talking so about something. I really you know admire Alpha J or or Alex. I mean um, I mean uh, you know some of those different reviewers. Um, uh, like those small time reviewers because they just do it because they're passionate. Jem wasn't passionate after a while and so he decided to uh, walk away. Um, it wasn't just what was the most profitable, it was like, oh, I've talked about all I need to do. Um, so I really respect that, just doing it because you care about it. And if you can't get new clicks and that too many clicks, don't beat yourself up. There is literally millions of uh, channels now and a lot of those hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of those are obsessively competing for the eyes of people and all of those videos of hot takes and doing things you wouldn't necessarily to do, exclamationing everything and talking about the negative stuff and you know stuff that appeals to the base human nature that is very hard to push away from, that is very hard to compete with. So don't beat yourself up. If you don't worry that it's your content or something like that, that just isn't good enough or that you're not good enough, certainly don't base your, your um, ego on this very, very, um, uh, very um, savage place, savage platform, because, you know, just go in because you enjoy it and you'll enjoy videos you watch more over the years um, when you don't get too obsessive about it. Just try and enjoy it. Well, you've uh, definitely changed the game, so thank you so much for that, Strider. Well, it was my pleasure, eh? I really appreciate the interview. Yeah, thanks so much for joining me. Um, if you guys haven't yet seen Phantom Strider for some reason, be sure to drop a subscribe. I'll leave links to all his Twitter and Discord and all that in the description below. Did I miss anything? Great. Um, thanks, Sarah. I appreciate that. Well, I'll uh, <laughs> talk to you later then. Yeah, thank you. Ciao.